Hi, good afternoon. We're here with James Lee from Infinix. How are you doing, James? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Busy couple of weeks, but can't grumble. Good stuff. Thank you very much for joining us today. Looking forward to the interview and learning more about what you do and what you've been up to. So if you could just kick things off and let us know a little bit about who you are, what it is that you do and how long you've been doing it for, please. Uh, yeah, so my name's James. I set up Infinix with a with a couple of tech guys back in 2019. Uh, we're an IT MSP provider, um, anything from IT support through to projects, delivering telecoms. Um, I've been in the IT game myself probably around coming up to 12 years ish now, um, so quite long. Um, and then when I met my two business partners, I, we they had the technical knowledge, I had the sales background, which is pretty much my me in a nutshell sales background. Um, and then we decided to roll the dice and here we are three and a half years later um building still building this company so yeah brilliant so um i'm gonna actually something that just sprung to mind there is uh, what made you guys take the leap then into going it alone um i'd always wanted to personally um and my actual where i met him i was working as kind of self-employed contractor in terms of sales so uh, i just wanted the freedom to be able to do what, what i wanted and, and not kind of have to be in certain meetings have to be here have to be there um then i got speaking to matt and kevin who are uh, my two business partners um and they wanted to do it as themselves as well they wanted to set their own company up they didn't have the sales expertise i didn't have enough technical expertise to to get beyond your kind of standard password resets and things like that <laughs> um so we figured you know what let's do it they, they was we was all kind of relatively, I won't say really unhappy, but co just content with where we was going in regards to who we was working for. Um, so we said, you know what, let's just do it. And we felt, well, if we're going to do it, you've got to go in for the penny and for the pound. Uh, I didn't want to start it as a, as a side hustle and then let it just kind of get fall off the way and, and end up dissolving it. Um, so, yeah, we just back in September 2019, we just said, right, let's do it. Um, and that's what's brought us here. Excellent. So what makes you guys stand out then from other providers in your space? What would you say is kind of your unique selling point? Um, our, our, our biggest selling point is something that we've launched quite recently, actually, that we're finding a big uptake in is that we don't, we're not tying people into really long term contracts. Ultimately, people, when they see an IT support provider, um, they don't want to change if they don't have to. Like bank accounts, it's a bit of a hassle. You don't want to change unless someone's doing something wrong. Now, if you do something right, you keep your customers. Um, if you don't, you lose them. Um, so that's probably one of our biggest USPs when we're approaching new businesses that don't really know us. Um, you know, we're not a soft cat of the world. We're not a CCS media. We're not a computer center. Um, you know, we don't have a, a, an Amazon marketing budget or Microsoft. You know, people get hear from us from word of mouth, cold calling that I'm a big fan of. Um, and just basically having chats with them, seeing what improvements they can see. And they're saying, look, well, why don't you take the chance with us? Why don't you run with us? We'll give you a 30 day rolling contract. If ever you're an happy, you can move wherever you want. Um, predominantly the don't um, in our experience. So I say that's our USP. Our tech guys, they're very meticulous in what they do. Uh, they don't just resolve problems saying, right, your computer's working now. They really delve down into finding out what the issues were, prevent them happening again. Um, Basically, so we have to do less work too, but it's also easier for us, uh, for, our, for our customers to just get on with what they want to do and, and make money. Good stuff. So what's your, your your business journey been like then over the last three and a half years? Um, it was tough, story. obviously. I, 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 don't like to see, I don't like to bring up COVID. Um, I think if anything in the IT sector, um, we're probably one of the few industries that came out of it. Um, kind of smelling I don't I don't like the term smelling of roses because it was it was tough for everybody um but people had to adapt their technology solutions how they was running their their IT and how people could work very quickly um so they leaned on us they leaned on professionals um so yeah it, it was tough that come um one of the biggest things that's helped us grow today which was to be able to pitch for projects and win them um was the government's introduction of the bounce back loan um we was going pretty well up until obviously lockdown and everything come in yeah. um and then we could get this to demonstrate where we was going as a business but that just eased us cash flow um at the start of things we was throwing his own money in to finance deals and waiting to get paid and and, and and like every business owner does you know we knew what we were setting out for so the the when they released that when they offered the bounce back loan and we qualified for one it's basically it, it's 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 allowed us to grow a lot faster than we wanted 
um, or that we dreamed of. We wanted to grow that fast. It's just we were realistic in what we was doing. Um, so, yeah, that hit. Um, and then things just things kind of snowballed. You know, people needed laptops. They needed them setting up. They needed VPNs. They needed this support because they didn't have someone in the office that could just Google. Um, they needed someone that could connect remotely to the users at home if things weren't working. So, yeah, we, we, we did pretty well out of that. People needed more agile phone systems, you know, not where you have to take your desk phone home and plug it in somewhere or have you got space for it. Um, so we saw a lot of people moving to our free CX solution so people could use it on the mobiles or on the desktops. Um, so, yeah, and then and then after that, it, we just kind of we just kind of kept working with those businesses without getting that position. And that's that's our growth. Um in a nutshell um the, yeah so you've uh, you've managed to obviously grow over the last three and a half years it's good to hear that, that bounce back loan has has helped and being able to you know provide that platform for uh, for being able to grow yeah absolutely um we've we've grown pretty pretty substantially um i'm looking at different areas this year you know i'm i'm a big fan of turnovers vanity profit sanity and cash yeah. is king you know if you're not getting paid <laughs> Um, if if you're selling a million pounds worth of stuff, but the cost of sales 1.2 million, um, I, I, we, we focus now on obviously the support aspect. Um, but yeah, we went. I I had a target for us as a business from being in sales and knowing what we could do of having one million pound in sales and in maybe his fifth year was my hope. Uh, we managed to do 1.4 in his in his third full year. Um, so, 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 so the growth's been good. That's not just on us. That's on certain distributors, certain supply chain working with us to grow. Uh, there's a few that have made it hard for us that are knocking on our door now. We've grown and want to do more with us. Um, and you know, we, we're staying loyal to the ones that that we have really um, that have helped us grow. But yeah, the, the the growth's been it's been a bit of a whirlwind at times. But yeah, fun, fun, challenging. And you probably self, you know, in with what you do and all the businesses you speak to. The more sales you get, the ha people feel that cash flow will come easier. It actually gets a lot yeah. harder uh, <laughs> because there's more to manage. There's more suppliers. The yeah. bigger the customers you deal with, they want longer payment oh, terms. Payment and terms, yeah. yeah, so so I mean, we love the rewards that come with it and being able to grow and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a challenge in itself as well. Stuff I'm going to say, you know, reflecting on your challenges uh, going forward, what the future looks like. But is is that a summary of of, of where you're at in terms of what the future looks like, growth and cash flow challenges? Um, I I think from a challenge perspective, it'll depend on our obviously our customers and, and industries. You know, there's a, there's a lot of layoffs at the moment um, going on in different industries. People are because of the the stuff that people read in the media and stuff like that. They're putting off buying. You know, IT something that it's usually at the bottom of the list, um, especially with the money that people will have put in a thing to, to get to the point where they could all work remotely. Um, so we're seeing that, we're seeing it die off a little bit. Um, I wouldn't expect us to exceed 1.4 million this year, to be honest. I'd be happy to hit a million, but we're working on areas that are more profitable, which is the main thing. Um, last year, people were still getting the laptops and stuff like that and trying to get in their setup so people could go back to work from home or work remotely how they could. Um, that's kind of gone now. Um, people have, kind of set um so in our market we've seen challenges where people are investing less maybe in it hardware um so obviously we have to make sure we pick that up in in other areas so but what's what's a hundred thousand pound in hardware in it services you'll make as much in ten thousand pounds of services so we don't need to increase as sales so much we just need to make sure we, we're selling the right type of things now to obviously alleviate that market drop in terms of general it procurement uh, sounds like a sensible approach, as you say, turnovers, vanity, profit, sanity. So yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be about that turnover growth level. It's that profit margin and, and where that's coming from. And not having to always look externally to do that. It's uh, working with what you've got to improve, which can sometimes... And, 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 that re and that reoccurring revenue, the stuff that you yeah. know is there on first day of month because someone's in a rolling contract and they haven't give you a notice, so you invoice them again and they're happy, um, which touch with people aren't leaving us and, and hopefully that doesn't change. Um, I imagine when this goes out, everyone will probably start trying to go after us customers. <laughs> we, we do have some in longer term contracts that wish to do that. You know, we, we, we kind of, we're an MSP that gives the, gives the end user the choice you know we've got pay as you go we've got the fixed term contracts where where their prices won't rise for however long they're in um and then obviously we've got the just the rolling monthly one where if we get a price increase their price goes up um it's as simple as that really so yeah it's um focusing on the right areas and hopefully we'll get where we need to be uh, there's a lot of value in your business if you've got repeat 
repeat customers. One for your uh, sanity, uh, yeah. and two as a, an actual uh, uh, figure in terms of what the business is worth. And if you've got a a good customer base that's on a monthly, regular contract, so taking all that in and reflecting back, what is you, would you say so far is the biggest lesson that you've learned to date? since being in business if there's one. the biggest lesson was the f probably the first it support customer we ever took on and it's to only date the one that's not still with us and that was through our choice um we bent over backwards you know we wanted that first contract I'm sure like a lot of businesses yeah. um we we didn't over promise and under deliver but we come in at a price point probably that didn't value what they wanted um so they're underpaying um then even though they signed a contract, we had issues with saying, oh, well, we need it sorted at this time, even though it's nine to five. Um, so the biggest lesson is probably, even though I used to do it from a sales background with bigger MSPs that I worked for, is just making sure that everyone's singing off the same hymn sheet before any, anything's signed. Otherwise, it just becomes a big dragged out battle of, you know, you signed this, well, we're blaming you and, and stuff like that. that. That is probably one of, if not the biggest lesson to date. Um, the second one, is probably just to make your decisions quickly, don't fester. Um, we did that a lot at the beginning in regards to should we do this and, and just sat on the fence. Um, we this will probably go. We, we we had a member of staff. We thought we were going to be great. We hired him. Didn't work out. We had to make that decision. We really liked the guy, but we had to make the decision quick on the basis of the business. So he stopped costing us money to kind of pull the plug. Um, he took it pretty well, in fairness, and he understood why. Um, but yeah, the, the, they're the two big lessons, obviously. Make sure your customers know what they're signing up for and you all have to send him sheet and make decisions swiftly. Um, and then just get on with, with, with the stuff that makes you money. <laughs> That's a good lesson shared there. Thank you very much for that. So uh, what inspires you to do what you do? It could be people that you work with, uh, your friends, your family, anything you read uh, or listen to, feel free to share. I mean, I, mean, I suppose it is family, obviously, having that. Not so much money. Um, a lot of business owners will tell you in the first, like, where we're only in three and a half years, I could earn probably a hell of a lot more just selling for some big um, IT MSP um, in regards to earnings and stuff like that. But it's just the freedom, that bit, the ability to obviously, you know, pick your kids up from school if you need to at the last minute, um, nip out and get them. If to say, oh, dad, can we go get tea tonight? I can make sure in my diary that as long as notes in there that's really important that can't be moved that that, that we can do that um so yeah it's probably more just that is probably the biggest inspiration but i suppose it all comes back to money um you know every, everyone's in it for unless you're running a charity you're in it for money um in it for money because you know you want to retire as early as possible you want to have a comfortable lifestyle you want to be able to take your kids away get them what they want and things like that so Yes, while it's all orientated kind of around family and, and being able to enjoy the smaller moments as they get older, um, it, I suppose it all comes back to money and just making sure that we, uh, you know, we continue to grow. And there's enough of that bottom line for all of us to, once we've paid everyone else, to, um, to, to have the lifestyles that each individual wants. And we all want different ones. So Yeah, true. Well, without the money, the fuel, there's not uh, the opportunity to provide for your family, is there? So yeah, you're right in that respect. Thank you. Um, so lastly, in terms of latest news around what you're up to, I mean, you've covered a fair bit and what you've talked about, but is there anything in terms of sharing latest uh, opportunities or even if it's just a website, feel free to, to let us know. Um, no, I mean, like I said, people can, uh, as uh, as websites in phoenix.co.uk, they're, they're welcome to have a look at it. I mean, we kind of do all things tech. We're, we're having a bit of an overhaul with the website. Um, one other thing that we've rolled out quite recently, but it's only in Hull and surrounding areas, is residential broadband. But that's kind of done through Infinix Broadband, which is a separate company. Oh, wow. um, main reason for that is that KCOM, I don't know how well you know Hull, but KCOM have had Monopoly for a very long time. Um, MS3, I've had a, a company, that, the, the fiber wholesalers, um, they're laying their own fiber networking in around Hull now, they've got the permits. Uh, following a lot of investment we've done some work with them on the it side of things anyway um so we've started doing that as well um so if people listening in around hull and they want a good deal um have a look at something like that we've got a postcode check it and see if we've got coverage in your area yet um and yeah that, that that's kind of it really we we are we are an it msp that makes your life easier um people don't change it msps if it's not 
if something's not working. Sorry, if it's all working. If something isn't working or you don't feel you're getting a good deal or you're raising the same issues, give us a chat. We can all just even run a, a complimentary health check and let you know what your issues are. Um, and then you can make the decision on whether it's worth uh, exploring any further. Any further. Brilliant. James, absolutely fantastic talking to you. Thank you very much for sharing all that you have. And I, uh, oh, thank you. I wish you best on the, the business journey that you're on. No, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more bumps in the road before we, before, before, before I get to the pinnacle of being able to sell it to one of these giants. Uh, <laughs> but you know, ba baby steps will get us there. <laughs> That's it. Good stuff. Thanks again.